So the other night, I was laying in bed and I had this great idea. Some all-American fragrances. Let's talk about those. And then I woke up in the morning, looked at the note that I had made, and I thought to myself, that's actually kind of a stupid idea. Let's do it anyway. Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing well. So yeah, today we're talking about seven different all-American fragrances that were pretty much all made by people from other countries. So let's jump into it and check these out. So I guess the idea here is that these are American companies, companies founded by somebody who uh, claims American on their citizenship. <laughs> yeah, so the first one is definitely all American. I mean, you can't go into a mall uh, without smelling it, assuming that the store is there. And, I mean, if there's a store within, I don't know, two miles of you, and you're gonna smell it. It's Fierce by Abercrombie and & Fitch. And of course, uh, what could be more American than, than putting a picture of a guy's body on the bottle itself, where if he pulls his jeans down one more centimeter, it's gonna become not safe for work. It's got musk, citrus, fir, cardamom, and vetiver, some of the notes in the scent. It's been knocked off a million times. Most well-known uh, is probably Mont Blanc Legend. That one's basically Fierce, but cheaper. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys, my shirt has red, white, and blue, so I guess that's kind of American. Now, as far as just being a versatile scent, people-pleasing scent, Fierce crushes it. People love the way this stuff smells. I mean, there's a reason that an Abercrombie and Fitch fragrance still commands a big premium, even at discounters. This stuff is not inexpensive. It's been out for a while and people still rock it. It still gets knocked off to this day. It's a really solid scent, even if some people don't like it because of the whole mall thing. Now, of course, you can't have a video about all American fragrances and not have a fragrance just called America, pineapple, bergamot, amber, birch, and lavender. Some of the notes in this fragrance, along with a bit of rose. This smells uh, quite a bit like Creed's Aventus, especially in the opening when you first spray it on. Gonna pick up those Aventus vibes right away. It's actually a really nice scent though. I know a lot of people write it off because of that Aventus similarity. They'll just go, oh, it's another stupid clone. But in, in spite of all that, you know, the, the lack of originality, it's actually really good. Yeah, versatile, daytime, nighttime, almost any season. And it is a certified compliment puller if that's important to you. And for the price, which is next to nothing, it's a steal. Now, if you look at Perry Ellis America, if you're trying to pick it up, do be aware there are two versions of America and they are not the same. So if you're looking for the event to see type of boy, you're looking for this one the new America, the old America smells different. Next up, I'm going with the Coach fragrance because, just, just because, and I'm going with Coach Platinum. Pineapple, vanilla, cashmere, and lavender are some of the notes in this scent. It got a little bit of a similarity to Dior Sauvage. It doesn't smell exactly like it, but it's in that style. So if you like those blue fragrance type of scents, you know, those anytime, anywhere type of scents, then this one you should check out. Again, the cost pretty good here. The Coach fragrances at discounters are aggressively priced, we'll say. And really all of the Coach fragrances, the Coach for Men fragrances, are basically made to appeal to as many people as possible. This one, like I said, with that little bit of a Sauvage tie-in is no different. Again, I hate saying it, but it's a big compliment puller. So if that's your thing, check it out. Now let's kick it back a little bit. Let's go back in time. We're gonna go with Halston Z14. Cypress, cinnamon, leather, and oak moss. Some of the notes in this scent. You smell it, you are immediately aware that this is not a fragrance that would be released by a mainstream designer nowadays, most likely. It is very inexpensive, so be aware of that. Maybe it won't be up to snuff for you if you're looking for an ultra high-end luxury fragrance, but if that's what you're looking for, then why are you buying something that's like $15? The atomizer is, is basically horrible. Yeah, it's terrible. The scent is actually really appealing to me. I mean, I like throwback scents. I like things that are gonna give me a 70s vibe, an 80s vibe. So this is something that's kind of 
in my wheelhouse, you could say. Good amount of cinnamon in here, surprisingly so actually. And then uh, a solid amount of cypress. Those are gonna be two of the main things that you pick up here. That does get some comparisons to Italian cypress from Tom Ford. I'd say side by side, decently different, but if you don't have the money for Italian cypress, then this one is gonna work just as well. And you know, this is one of those fragrances that for quite a while had a NASCAR driver as the face of the scent. Come on, you can't get more American than that. So yeah, Halston Z14, NASCAR driver attached, old school, dig it. Next up, the most expensive of the bunch, Tom Ford Oud Wood. Oud, Rosewood, Cardamom, and Vanilla, some of the notes in this scent. I love the way this stuff smells. Absolutely love it. And uh, I think it really could be the pinnacle of Tom Ford. So yeah, this stuff smells fantastic. Absolutely love it. It's been knocked off a bunch of times. Other people trying to ride the coattails of this fragrance because when it came out, everyone just, you know, took it in and they were like, okay, there is an oud fragrance with Western sensibilities taken uh, at the forefront of the mind of the creator. That was like just total word salad. That sense. Hopefully you got what I meant. So it's an oud fragrance that's really wearable, easy to pull off, stripped away of a lot of that skank and and funk that you'll find in, prominently in a number of other oud centric fragrances. So it gives you this kind of mysterious vibe, this this warm woodiness, this spiciness with the wood, a bit of sweetness as well. And it's just amazing in cool weather. You can rock this stuff on a date, formally to the office, casually, whatever, and it friggin kills it. Now this stuff that I'm gonna talk to you about right now, a lot of younger guys are gonna go, oh, that smells like my grandpa. And you know what I'd say to that? Well, your grandpa smells friggin' awesome. How about that? It's Polo Green from Ralph Lauren. Pine, leather, oak, moss, juniper, some of the notes in this scent. This is one of the quintessential masculine green fragrances. I love green fragrances. Now, I understand that it's apparently kind of an acquired taste, you know, green scents, because uh, anytime I talk about them or other people talk about them, the interest level is like, non-existent. Oh, you got a new fragrance coming out. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, oh, what kind of scent is it? Oh yeah, it's green. No, thanks. Bye. Peace. That's what happens. That's what happens. But uh, like I said, polo green, this stuff is fantastic. It's been out forever. Well, not literally forever, but it's been out for a long time and people are still rocking it. And I think it's because it was so popular for so long that so many people do have uh, that kind of father or grandfather vibe stuck in their mind with this scent. I mean, I should know my dad wore that. So, I mean, I, I kind of, if I'm honest with you, have that same kind of association. But when I smell it, you know, just taking it in on its own, it is just a killer scent. Even to this day and through multiple reformulations, it still slaps. If you can, you can try to pick up a bottle of Polo Modern Reserve. I've got a bottle of it over there. It's discontinued, been discontinued for a while, but that one is very, very good if you're a fan of polo green it has a little bit of a throwback to the vintage bottles of polo green some twists done to it, it smells fantastic and last up we're going with carolina herrera 212 men now i know what you're thinking carolina herrera she's not really american <gasps> yes she is born in venezuela i believe and then uh, immigrated to the u.s and is now an american citizen and i ask you What's more American than that? Coming here and uh, crushing it and making a, a massive company. Hmm. That's pretty American. And also it's 212, so it's like New York, you know? So that's American too. This one gets forgotten nowadays. People don't really talk about it very much. I mean, the 212 line in general, people aren't really hyped for anymore, it seems like. And that's uh, a little bit strange because this one, was a massive hit. Green notes, grapefruit, ginger, sandalwood, some of the notes in the scent here. So yeah, it's very fresh with that green opening, only here it's done with a more modern, sweet, and uh, fresh spicy designer style. As compared to the green in Polo Green, which is just hairy chested and masculine. Again, a fragrance that is super versatile, fantastic on an evening out or during the day, and a scent that countless people rocked for basically any occasion. You might say it's a little bit youthful, you might say that it's not complex enough, but I think it's solid, even to this day. Even though a lot of the flankers that come out of the 212 line suck. 
Uh, but what are you going to do? That's probably why Carolina Herrera releases them as limited editions for one year. That way everybody goes and buys them and they go, oh, yeah, I probably wouldn't buy this again. And then Herrera's like, no, nah, that's cool because we're not making that anymore. We got a new one. Come check this one out. It's better for sure. All right, guys, there we go. Seven All-American fragrances. Really, though, each one of these I do enjoy quite a lot in their own ways. You guys let me know in the comments below some of your All-American fragrances. Well, I should say All-American designer fragrances because we could go heavy into some American indie fragrances for sure. And maybe we'll do that on a future episode. And you know, I'll have to include at least one imaginary authors in there. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging with me today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.